Hey guys, Jared here with Midwest Mountain Hunter and Flow Ridge Rifles. Uh, today I'm going to do a video on uh, how to coat your bullets with boron nitride. I have actually been using a uh, Molly for several years and a lot of the reasons around Molly were to get a uh, an advantage in BC. Um, it allows you also to um, it reduces your pressure so that way a lot of times you can increase your charge, increase velocity. So, um, and also to downrange, like I said, on the BC side, I've seen on average with the Molly around about a 10% advantage from what I have seen and actually shot and then measured the drop and then went through and, had, and then backed out to actually get the BC difference. And like I said, on average it's about 10%. Now, I have not done the boron nitride before but I do know that there's some advantages to using boron nitride versus molly um, it's not temperature uh, sensitive and from what I have um, seen and actually you know watching some of the videos around from David Tubbs and and some of the literature that he's put out is those um, cold bore the first shots it's you don't really have to have these fouling shots um, that is uh that's pretty important to me and um as we go down this path of starting to build um custom long range rifles i plan on using in everything that we build um the actual tubs final finish system and then you in that you actually start by um shooting through this a different the um grits on these bullets so what that does is it takes out those tooling marks that are left in the throat so as you start shooting these things through you're getting that you are basically you know you're polishing that bore now we're already going to be dealing with match grade barrels so um i don't expect them to be rough but like i said you're going to have those tooling marks at the end so when you finish and you're going through this final finish system the last couple bullets you shoot are actually boron nitride coated. So I know that we are going through and getting to the point of doing this break in piece, lapping them in. Now we're going to pick up and start doing our reloads. And um, like I said, I ordered this from David Tubbs, and I've done I've done um, a couple different boxes so far. I've coated some of these. Um, for the 30 nozzler that we're um, building. I did some 230 uh, Sierras. I've got the um, 212 um, Hornady ELDX. Um, and I also coated some bur 215 um, Burger Hybrids. Now, um, what I'm also going to be building uh, a 26 nozzler. And in that 26 nozzler, a couple of the ones I'm wanting to shoot are the new Sierra 150 grain um, hollow point boat tail. These things have got some crazy high BC on them. Um, with a 150 grain bullet, these things on, on a uh, on a G1 are at a 0.713, so pretty impressive, I would say. And you know, I, I've heard from several people, and I know these things are called target bullets, but I have used target bullets hunting before, and I've seen what they can do. And a lot of times, they can they can do some damage. Um, I'm also going to be running these 143 grain uh, Hornady ELDXs. See which ones actually shoot better. Um, who knows? Uh, but anyways, I might as well get into the point of like how are we going to coat these bullets? All right. One of the first things I'm going to do is in the manufacturing process, naturally there are um, a lot of times some different uh, metal pieces and whatnot that could be on your bullets or as they're you know coming through. One of the first things we want to do is we're going to clean these bullets. So I'm going to take all these bullets. I have cleaned this container. This is like an old, this is a container I've used just like for protein powder or something like that. But I've taken and I've used rubbing alcohol and I've cleaned this thing. So literally the only thing I'm using this for is for cleaning bullets and then I clean it after I'm done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these bullets. paper thing out. I'm then going to take them and I'm going to saturate 
these bullets, okay? With the rubbing alcohol. Put the top on. I'm gonna swirl them around a bit, okay? Now you see that I have some microfiber towels out here. I did this so that way whenever I dump them out, I'm going to try to dry them pretty quick. Hopefully I can get through this video and um, you know you guys can see the process. I've actually already done a couple, so I'm not going to actually have to put them in the tumbler. Wait, I've already got that portion done, so that way hopefully it'll be a quicker video that you guys can see the end-to-end -end process. But anywho, so once you get these guys out, you want to dry them off. Get them good and dry, okay? Hopefully you don't drop them everywhere like I just did. And I have done that before. Get them back in there. Clean them off. Alright. Rub them around. Now another way you can do this is if you don't want to do rubbing alcohol, you can get a super hot um, bath of water and use Dawn uh, dish soap. It, you're going to get pretty much the same results by, uh, by doing that as well. So like I said, get these guys good and dry. Alright, now in this tub system, it comes with this little bottle. You're going to get the actual boron nitride. It's going to come with a quarter teaspoon measure, a popsicle stick for topping it off, and also recommends using some tape so that way when you put it in your tumbler, it doesn't come off. Okay? Alright, so these guys are feeling dry. I'm going to load them up. Now that I got them loaded up, I'm going to go to the get the boron nitride, and we're going to measure this off. That's it. Probably about all you're going to need. First time through, and depending on how much, I'm actually going to do just a hair more here with these, because this is I got a hundred of them in there. All right. Now what you're going to do is, you're going to seal this up. I'm going to take, I've been using electrical tape just because of the size of it. It actually works out really well. And I wrap that around. Now, once you get these guys in, what you're going to do is you're going to put it into your tumbler. Now, you can set it in there. Now, you know, you, there's a couple different kinds of tumblers. It says, you know, you gotta, you, it has to be a vibratory tumbler. That's one thing you have to have. Um, I think it could work too if you were doing a, um, you know, one that you put it in a rotary. I don't know if a rotary one would work. I haven't. I just did read in the instructions that it does have to vibrate. It's for really what you need. You need that impact of those bullets hitting across each other inside that container for this to work right. So, all right, you're going to put it in there, run that down. What I've been doing, I have been putting these things on, and let's say before I go to work or before I go to bed, I've been trying to get pretty much, like I said, I got like six, seven boxes that I've been trying to coat here lately. And um, now what I'll do is when I'm done, I haven't done anything yet. All I did was literally take them out and I dumped them into this bag, okay? So, what I'm going to do is, and I'm, this is something that I used to do from, um, with the Molly, is I would always take like an old sock, 
Now, here's what I would do. This is just so that way I could get all that excess powder and residue off. So I can get these guys in here. Okay. Dropped a couple. It's easy when you're coming out of the, um, actually when you're coming out of the, the bottle, because you can put the top of the sock around. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take it, and I'm just going to knock off any of those high pieces of dust. And really, honestly, the sock starts getting coated <laughs> with that uh, nitride. It actually works out pretty well. All right, now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to dump these back into the box and it's kind of funny I've noticed a little bit difference depending on the, the bullet manufacturer but the Hornady's they end up just getting um, and I'll show you just compare it against a um, ones that have not been done yet so you can see that they're going to be a little bit more dull okay nothing crazy but it is slick and like I said too the advantages of this is um, supposed to be worked better than Molly and we're going to find out um, I'm going to be putting these things putting them to the test and one thing I also do too is if I always Molly I will take Molly or nitride, I typically mark them. I'll put B in for boron nitride. Molly, I'll write Molly on there. Just so that way as I'm grabbing bullets, I know what, know what I'm working with. Um, yeah, so I should have this week, actually tomorrow, I'm picking up, uh, or I have the 26 and the 30. Uh, I will probably be going through and doing some videos coming up soon. I'll be mounting, putting the scopes on, start doing some range testing, uh, load data. Uh, yeah, so there's probably gonna be a lot more stuff coming on the channel here pretty here pretty quickly and through the summer. I do intend on taking the 30 this year uh, elk hunting in Colorado, and we're gonna try to run that 26. My dad's got, I'm gonna have an elk tag too, and we're gonna try to take an elk with the 26. And I'm building another 26 and it's going to look pretty similar to the 30 that I'm building and it's going to have a little bit shorter barrel. I'm running, I want to be putting a 28 inch barrel on my 30 and I want to run a 26 inch barrel on the 26 nozzler. So want to kind of see some differences in the velocity gains by running the 28 versus the 26. And uh, yeah, a couple differences on the stocks. You guys will see that. Like I said, more to come. There's also going to be the website coming when you guys see that. I will have a landing page from Midwest Mountain Hunter on the website. And also, too, whenever uh, we're in the process, getting the FFL, getting all those other things completed. So you will see Flint Ridge Rifles also as a standalone page. But you'll always be able to access Flint Ridge Rifles from Midwest Mountain Hunter. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit, uh, hit subscribe. And like I said, more to come. And um, if you guys have any questions, you can reach out to me at um, Jared at Midwest Mountain Hunter, or you can reach out at Flint Ridge Rifles at gmail.com. Thanks, 